Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Paul Minnie. Let us pray. Lord, on this day of graduation, we thank you for the countless blessings that have brought us to this day, for your steadfast presence in an ever-changing world, for your protection in love and challenging times, for your continued guidance as we step into a world full of hope and promise. Today, as we celebrate and welcome these new soldiers and their families into the next step of their journey, we ask for your blessing, we ask for your wisdom, and we ask for your grace. Bless this day of graduation. Bless these soldiers and their families. And may God bless the United States of America. Amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see standing in formation before you who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation of the training cycle. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training. Far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier. But those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the families and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of them and are equally honored that they have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from your left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the command of Chief Warrant Officer Three Kevin Pick, graduating soldiers from companies Alpha, Bravo, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from companies Charlie and Delta. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system, selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Peter Akin, who serves as the executive officer for the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Burns. On his left, is Command Sergeant Major Kevin Karofsky, the battalion's senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Colors and persons to be honored. Center, march. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all armed forces veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants, who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the drill sergeant of the cycle, the Bravo Company, 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Star First Class Scratching, will recite the drill sergeant creed. We ask that all drill sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the drill sergeant creed. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Burns and Command Sergeant Major Kevin Krosky will now present the awards. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for 439 Infantry Battalion is Connor Gratchett from Kenosha, Wisconsin. The soldier leader of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private Alexander Mathis from Minneapolis, Minnesota. The soldier of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private Silium Kim from Olympia, Washington. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private First Class Jennifer Berrios from San German, Puerto Rico. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private Gavin Cruz from Dedeo, Guam. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Carlos Mejia from San Bernardino, California. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private First Class Christian Elosigi from Phoenix, Arizona. The soldier leader of the cycle for Delta Company is Private Dylan Wallace from Asheville, North Carolina. The soldier of the cycle from Delta Company is Private First Class Christopher Lett from Monroeville, Alabama.
Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Burns. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to 439 Infantry's graduation ceremony to recognize the United States Army's newest, newest soldiers standing before you on the field. I'd like to extend a thank you and a warm welcome to Major General Mrs. Harder for attending today, to our Post Army Training Center Commander, General Kelly, to our Post CSM Sergeant Major Oates, Colonel Solheim, Colonel Hutton, Sergeant Major Blyler, other distinguished guests, and most importantly, to you all in the stands and watching virtually, the family and friends of our graduating class. It's a great day to be at Fort Jackson and a part of the Hartford Battalion team. To begin, and I know how much he loves when I do this, uh, we are privileged here today to welcome first Sergeant Retired Ed Hogue and his wife Kathy. Ed served with the battalion as a squad leader in battle company during Vietnam and is a distinguished member of the regiment. During two tours here at Fort Jackson, he also served as a drill sergeant, senior drill sergeant, and first sergeant. And we stand here today as proud members of this battalion and regiment because of the legacy left by veterans and their families like Ed. It's an incredible honor to have you here. Hardcore, thank you for attending. Can you please stand and be recognized? In fact, I'd like to recognize all of our veterans and retirees of our armed services, past and present in the audience today. To my brothers and sisters in arms, thank you for attending. You especially know the significance of what these soldiers have accomplished as we welcome them to the profession. Could you also please stand and be recognized? So, a little over 10 weeks ago, the 513 soldiers you see before you left home, some of them for the first time, they left as civilians, they left as your sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers. You sent them to us, and you trusted us to house them, to feed them, to train them, to make them better people. And now they stand before you transformed. And I bet you noticed yesterday, and I said I would ask, so let me ask, were they more confident did they look stronger? Yeah. Did they stand up straighter? Yeah. Did they speak with conviction? Yeah. Yes, I know they did. And because 439 has a strict no returns policy. So that's it. They go to AIT tomorrow. But. But to be serious, they have learned a lot over these last 10 weeks. Basic combat training has taught them the basics and fundamentals of what it takes to be an army soldier. Shoot, move, communicate, survive. So they can take care of the people to their left and their right. More so, they learned about themselves. To push further than they thought possible. To never quit. To be disciplined, even when no one is watching. But I think most importantly, it's what they've learned about others. To treat people with dignity and respect to interact with people from different cultures, races, religions, and creeds, and to share burdens, because they are part of a team that is stronger than any of them are alone. America, look at the field in front of you. For so many different reasons, the soldiers before you have answered the call, and they hail from every corner of this great country, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. But they also come from 27 different countries spanning six continents, Antarctica one day, and speak dozens of different languages at their native tongue. And yet, they all volunteer to serve this nation, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, to protect this diversity that makes us so unique, a nation not defined by our shared background, but our shared beliefs. America, this is you. This is us. They represent our greatest resource and our largest strength, our people. And the best part about people is that they all have stories. And for this graduating class, their Army story is just beginning. But some of their stories are already very powerful and will only grow more impactful. Let me share a few with you. Specialist support from Battle Company was born in Kabul, Afghanistan shortly after the withdrawal of Soviet forces. Forced to flee with his family and live in a refugee camp in Pakistan. After coalition forces overthrew the Taliban, he and his family moved back to Kabul, 
where he completed high school and went on to study English, English literature at a full university. He then worked as an interpreter and worked despite the constant risk to himself and his family. A short time ago, he was granted special visa status and moved to the United States and now stands before you as an American soldier ready to give back for bringing him and his family to safety. Private first class Clement from Dagger Company was faced with something no father wants to be faced with. His daughter Janai was diagnosed with leukemia. She needed help quickly and he needed to help her. And now, thanks to his decision to serve, she is receiving the chemo and radiation she needs, and he stands in front of you, a loyal father and an American soldier. <laughs> Private American from Charlie Company had a difficult upbringing. Surrounded by gang violence, kidnapped and thankfully rescued in Mexico before his family was able to safely make it to the United States and start a better life. He joined the army to pay back the country that had given his family hope and opportunities and now serves as an example for others. <laughs> Private Torres from the Herb Company started his journey months ago. He decided to make a change in his life, work hard, and started working out and has now lost over 100 pounds on his journey. Today, his disciplined efforts and professionalism are on display as he stands before you, an American soldier ready to serve his country. <laughs> Yet these aren't the only stories, and these amazing people didn't do it alone. They made it this far because of the other amazing people you see before you on the field. The drill sergeants, non-commissioned officers with their own families, stressors, personal ambitions, who sacrifice their time and give of themselves day after day, week after week, to ensure everyone on this field can graduate today. They change lives every day, even if they don't always realize it. Can we please give our drill sergeants a round of applause? And now to you, the soldiers of the hard work of time. Be proud of what you've accomplished, and don't let anyone take away what we've earned. Don't give them any reason to, ever. Earn it and live it every day you wear this uniform and even once you take it off. You are about to enter a long story tradition written by those that came before you. You are now an American soldier. Remember you've learned you're capable of far more than you ever thought possible, that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to, and that nothing worth earning is ever easy. You know, we have an old saying here in Eternia, don't say goodbye, say good journey. So get ready to run in the sun, to train in the rain, and to fight at night. It won't always be easy, but you know that you can do it, and do it well, because you represent our army and our country. So good luck, good journey, hardcore, strike strong, and we practiced this yesterday, victory. Today's soldier is, above all, a warrior, adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in Army values, and determined to destroy enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldier's Creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see you that you are a willing and able protector of the freedoms so arduously fought for by all who have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Private Silium Kim leads the soldiers standing before you through the reciting of the Soldier's Creed.
Please be seated. In consideration of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it has passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldier under the canopy to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldier on the field once instructed by the narrator and by respective companies. The 39th Infantry Regiment was organized at Camp Syracuse, New York on 1 June 1917 by transfer of veteran troops from the 30th Infantry Regiment. In December 1918, the 39th Infantry Regiment was assigned to the 4th Infantry Division and in the spring of 1918 sailed for France as part of the Army Expeditionary Force in World War I and joined the battle for the first time during World War I in the now famous Ain Marne Offensive. The regiment was later reassigned on 1 August 1940 to the 9th Division, which the regiment fought under in World War II. The 39th Infantry Regiment would subsequently participate in a myriad of key engagements to include storming the beach of Algiers, securing Utah Beach, and culminating in the Battle of the Bulge, and aiding in the capture of the Remagen Bridgehead. After a series of inactivations and activations, 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment deployed in 1966 with the 9th Infantry Division to the Republic of Vietnam, participating in Operation Palm Tree, the 1968 Tet Offensive, and the Battle of the Plain of Reeds, becoming immortalized as a hardcore battalion. The 39th Infantry Regiment was inactivated 25 September 1969 at Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, and relieved from assignment to the 9th Infantry Division. The 39th Infantry Regiment was transferred 3 April 1987 to the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command and activated at Fort Dix, New Jersey, then later departed Fort Dix, New Jersey for Fort Jackson, South Carolina, arriving on 22 August 1990, where the 4th Hardcore Battalion was subsequently activated on 1 October 2017. In the American Army, reviews were originally outlined in Baron Friedrich von Steuben's Blue Book and practiced by Revolutionary Cadets. A review consisted of four stages, a formation of troops, presentation and honors, inspection, and a march and review. Today's reviews have incorporated three additional stages, honors to the nation, remarks, and a conclusion. The presence of the band or military music represents the significant role that the drum, fife, and other musical instruments have played throughout military history for signaling in camp or on the battlefield. The presence of the colors at the center of the formation represents their presence at the forefront of the unit during the heat of battle. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, Major Peter Akin, and the battalion staff. Sergeant First Class Corey Walton. 